What's up, guys? The Bears are back at practice today. One more practice before the team laces up in full pads tomorrow and Saturday. Those are going to be huge. I expect today's practice to be an easy one, but I will be back to break down everything you need to know. But first, I want to talk about a couple of rumors going around and give an update on the remaining free agents left. Let's go ahead and get right into it. First, as far as free agency goes, my top three available free agents might all be off the market or close to coming off the market in the next 24 hours or so. The Dolphins have already agreed to a deal with Emmanuel Ogba, and then Unique Ngakwe now has a two-day visit scheduled with the Carolina Panthers. He stayed overnight last night, and he's expected to continue meeting with them all day. All signs point towards Ngakwe becoming a Carolina Panther. So far this morning, a deal is still not official yet, but I expect that could change soon. But then even more, my favorite free agent target, center Connor Williams, seems destined to sign with the Seattle Seahawks. He's already passed the physical with the team, proven that he is healthy like it was reported, a good sign considering he tore his ACL around eight or nine months ago. He had a great visit with the team yesterday, and he remains in Seattle now. Like Ngakwe, a deal isn't official yet, but all signs point towards Connor Williams agreeing to terms with the Seahawks. So the Ogba deal is done, and Gakwe is negotiating with the Panthers, and Connor Williams is currently negotiating with the Seahawks. If Ryan Poles was interested in either Ngakwe or Connor Williams, he's running out of time to make a move. I do not expect either guy to become a Chicago Bear at this point. I think Ryan Poles plans to use the extra $12 million in cap space to possibly help with extensions later in the season. So I wanted to briefly cover the guys who are in the final years of their deal, or signed one-year deals that Ryan Poles could approach about an extension. Those guys are Keenan Allen, Tevin Jenkins, Jack Sanborn, Coleman Shelton, Jacob Martin, Khalil Herbert, Josh Blackwell, Eamon Ogbong Bamiga, Matt Pryor, and Greg Stroman Jr., as well as DeAndre Carter. Those are the 10 best players on the team that are entering the final years of their deal with the Bears. Only a few players on that list would really be candidates for extensions as well. Obviously, Tevin Jenkins is the name that you guys are most familiar with, but I already talked in depth about his contract extension possibilities yesterday. The Bears are waiting until after the bye week. And then we have Keenan Allen, who's a superstar, and I'd love to see him stick around for another two years. But if he plays like he's capable of, he's still going to want a really big payday at 33 years old. I have no idea if Ryan Poles wants to invest big money in a guy that age, but a short-term deal could work out for both sides. Keenan can still play. But if something did get done with Keenan Allen, it would happen much later in the season after they saw what he still has left in the tank. And then Jack Sanborn's another important guy on our roster. But if you missed my video on Sanborn a week or so ago, we don't really need to extend him this year. The reason is because he was an undrafted free agent and he will not be unrestricted next year. He would be a restricted free agent, meaning that if we don't extend him, Ryan Poles still has the right to match any offer he gets in free agency next year. I'd love to keep Sanborn around long term on a value deal though. He is a valuable member of our defense and plays some special teams. Maybe Poles gets something done early. And then what about Coleman Shelton? Currently, he's battling for the starting center job. But what if he winds up winning the job and starting every game? I think in that situation, Ryan Poles would be wise to approach Shelton later in the year and try to work out a team-friendly extension. Nobody really talks about Coleman Shelton, but I think he was a valuable signing this offseason. He isn't a long-term answer at center, but he's only 28 years old, and he could easily man the position for a couple of years if things go well. Then we have Jacob Martin, a guy who's never been a starter in his career, but he has developed into a situational pass rusher, and he's already impressed our coaching staff early in camp. It's way too early to talk about an extension here, but if Martin can put together a solid year, Ryan Poles might be interested in bringing him back. The rest of the names are pretty much long shots or special teams guys. I imagine Poles would want to bring back Josh Blackwell and Amen Ogbong Bamiga, but only at the right price. They are core special teams players, and he's not going to overpay for a special teams guy. 
But overall, I expect Ryan Poles may be done as far as free agency goes, unless we have some injuries, knock on wood. I think he plans on using our leftover cap space to extend guys or let it roll over into next year. But then finally, I wanted to talk about Khalil Herbert, another name that was on the list that I didn't mention. There were reports yesterday that Herbert could be a cut candidate, and I completely disagree with that take. Khalil Herbert is not going to be cut. Teams have called about trading for Herbert. I've heard reports that the Bengals and Cowboys were interested in Herbert this offseason, but the Bears kept him over shipping him out for a late round pick. So why on earth would they cut him? When you think about it, Herbert is in the last year of his contract, and he's scheduled to hit free agency next year. So I get the idea of trading him, but cutting him just makes absolutely no sense. Herbert is good enough to be a starting running back in the NFL, at least a two-down back. He can step in and start if Swift gets hurt, and he really rounds out our running back room. Each guy, DeAndre Swift, Khalil Herbert, and Roshan Johnson, brings something different to the table. Swift is the three-down back who can do it all. Roshan is more of a hammer who brings his third down back skills with him. And then Herbert is more of a home run threat who likes to bounce runs to the outside and has a ton of talent. To me, Herbert's pretty much a lock to make this roster. Unless some team offers a better pick for him, Herbert is a guy who's just too valuable to cut. Even though I don't think Ryan Poles plans on extending him, it just doesn't make any sense to cut him. Even if you want to move on from him, he could be a valuable trade chip into the season. What if a playoff team starting running back gets hurt in camp or early on in the year? Herbert then would become a perfect trade chip, but I'm also fine keeping him all year and letting him walk next year if nobody makes a good offer. Remember a couple of things here. First, running backs get hurt more than any other position in the NFL, and we very well could need Herbert this year. Swift and Roshan have both dealt with injuries. But second, Ryan Poles is trying to fix everything about this franchise, and one of the things he's trying to accomplish is to stop overpaying in free agency and start earning compensatory picks. Next year's free agency could be key for that. Poles could let Keenan Allen walk, and that increases the odds we get rewarded. In that situation, Khalil Herbert is another guy who can increase our formula next season if he leaves along with Tevin Jenkins and everybody else that was on that list. Cutting him now would mean we can't trade him or get a comp pick for him next year. That makes zero sense to me. I have no idea why that was reported. Personally, I kind of feel bad for Herbie. I think he deserves a chance to start or at least be in a rotation this year, but people seem to have written him off here. Yes, I do expect DeAndre Swift and Roshan Johnson to be our top two backs, but I wouldn't rule out Herbert being the RB2 this year either. But at the end of the day, it makes no sense to just give him away or release him. He's too good of a player, and he can help this team. Another thing people don't talk about is how Herbert's one-cut style of running really fits well with the new kick return rules as well. He could also be a factor as a kick returner. Something else to keep an eye on. I'll be back in a few hours with my report on Bears practice today. Pads go on tomorrow. That's when things are going to finally get real in the trenches. I appreciate everybody who watches. Please remember to hit that like button for me, guys. Stay tuned. And until next time, bear down.